David Dobrik One of YouTube's biggest comedy sensations with nearly 19 million subscribers is known for creating short, fast-paced 4 minute and 20 second montages of him and his friends. This group is better known as the Vlog Squad. On the internet, a lot of people praise him for his kind heart, giving his friends new cars, giving random strangers on the street a large amount of money and so on. However, recently, David Dobrik has come under a lot of fire. People claiming him to be a bully, manipulative, and irresponsible. And today we will be removing that mask and revealing the truth. My meat is huge and it's all for you. <laughs> it's chicken. Uh, threw that freak in the oven about 20 minutes ago, 180 degrees, boom. Cooking. Got that shit locked down. 180. Mmm. <laughs> chicken tasty. One thing I've always gone by is this. If it tastes like chicken, keep digging. If it tastes like trout, Get the fuck out. But yes, you are indeed watching the Curtis Price channel. Get your popcorn, get your snacks, get a cup of tea if you're f***ing English, and sit down and enjoy the fall of the YouTube king. So Mr. David Dobrik being cancelled once again on the internet, except this time, it wasn't Trisha Paytas. I mean, she's involved, but it wasn't her, surprisingly. Now, David Dobrik hasn't actually uploaded in 10 months since the virus started. So the reasons for the internet hunting him down is not due to recent events. It was his past videos. Just like Shane Dawson, actually. Um, in fact, a lot of YouTubers get cancelled most of the time because of their past. I'm warning you, don't touch that pussy Shane. Now David is legendary for making fast paced videos as I mentioned, but the internet didn't miss this clip on the podcast. Yeah, I was the only Jewish kid in the school. Shut up. Yeah, only Jewish kid. Did you get shit for that? All the time. You walk down the hallway and someone just throw a penny on the ground. Oh. And everyone would laugh. That used to happen at my school too. <laughs> but that's not shit. That's Unless you're like a sensitive like asshole about it. Like it's kind of, it's literally just like, I get it. I get it. I mean, I was able I to take it fine. It built character. But I know when I tell like some people that story, they're like, that's awful. Yes, I know. Uh, I mean, this is hard for me to watch. Yeah. I actually used to like David Dobrik. I used to watch his videos all the time. But apparently Jewish racism is, um, isn't really an issue. Apparently. Jewish racism. Everyone is just sensitive. You sensitive piece of shit. Ugh. Disgusting. Now go make me some breakfast, you freak. <laughs> now he also said in the podcast that his teachers used to say things like that too, and that they were really cool. I have to agree with David. Saying offensive things is cool. But like, I know where I grew up, it was, I mean, you you can say- no, Brandon you... told me the same thing. Brandon, we were about the same age as Brandon, and he said in his school. Oh yeah. Oh, 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 in California that it was the same. No, 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 it was- So it's was... still brutal. No, I mean like, I know teachers that would make you dirty chew jokes like, because it's just what it's not bad they're just words and like i think maybe that's how we were raised we're like they're not you had a teacher that told a jew joke we had really cool teachers really y'all gay i'm not now that that is cool <laughs> you know the pain that the jews went through in the holocaust wasn't enough so let's bully them, them. Even more, you know, that is that is the that is the plan of 2021. Bully everyone. Don't do that. Unless you are a sensitive piece of shit. That's fucking cool, man. I think when David said this, he was being quite insensitive, in my opinion. Um, I think there is a line between banter and what's morally right to say. I don't know. Maybe I'm just a sensitive piece of shit after all. <laughs> now let's talk about something like releasing a clip on the internet that your friends slash co-workers told you not to. Because at the end of the day, they may be friends, but they're the vlog squad. They're kind of like co-workers. You know, they all make effort to show up in videos and uh, plan things, etc. Um, what's it called? Fruikers. That's, that's it, I got it. That's right. God, I'm on fire today. So on Trisha Paytas and H3's podcast, Frenemies, they spoke about how Jason Nash, who is David Dobrik's best friend, I guess you could say, and also Trisha's ex-boyfriend. Just wanted to make sure I got that detail in there. 
It's Trisha's ex-boyfriend. Trisha Petersis. Toilet roll bummel. <laughs> if you know, you know. Trisha Pate ass. There we go. That was badass. Yes, it was. But they spoke about a clip that was recorded where Jason Nash wanted to have a threesome with Tana Mongu. Mongu, Mojo, Tomato Tomato. But uh, I'm almost 100% sure you remember her. You fucking nigger. Yes, thank you, Tana. That'll be all. However, when they wanted to do this bit in the vlog where he wanted to have a threesome with her, at the time she was only 18 according to Trisha Paytas, and he was 44. I'm not doing that, I'm not doing it. And they kept pushing it and pushing it, it was so And so was Jason in on the pushing or was he also telling David I'm not comfortable? He, I, to Jason's defense, he was kind because like, he was dating me and at the time he's kind of like, I don't know. Even that night he's like, I want to put that in the vlog and David puts it in the vlog. <laughs> That's so fucked up. Yeah, bad. but Jason... So yeah. both you and Jason are saying, both yeah, saying, we, David, don't put this in the mm, vlog. Yeah. And he does. I still remember it was like 2 a.m. He calls Jason, like, can I put this? And I'm like, no. And then Jason's like, no, don't. And then he did. And then he did it again a second time that week. And I don't want my fucking shit. Uh, maybe. <laughs> if you can get Dan and have a three way with Ryan Trisha, I'll fucking buy you a Ferrari. I'll do anything. I'll be your slave. There's some disgusting behavior that I've seen patterns of in my past, and I think it's disgusting. You'll buy me a Ferrari. $100,000 Actually, you can make that happen. You can't run to Trisha with this piece of video and be like, Jason said, Jason said. Damn it. <laughs> Trisha, can you help me with my video? You would do anything for me? Anything. Can you and Jason have a threesome with Tana? <laughs> So both Jason and Trisha asked David not to upload the video, however, he still did. I think this is a great example of David Dobrik's friendships. He will push and defy a lot of his friends when it involves videos. Uh, it's not illegal, but it's just, um, it's kind of like when you, you when you see, if you have a pull up outside university and uh, this guy gets out of the car, he looks about 50 and the girl comes out to like 23 and it's like, oh, this must be your dad. No, I'm actually your boyfriend. Alright. <laughs> Look, age is just a number, alright? Age doesn't come into the equation of love. That's why all the pedophiles are locked up right now. <laughs> However, I wouldn't exactly call Jason a victim. And he... Well... Let's just listen. Because Jason's 44 in this clip, Tana's 18, mm -hmm. and he like tried to make kiss her, and Tana's like, I didn't want it, why did you do it? The cameras weren't on. And everyone's like, well, she was legal, she was an adult, but she's clearly saying she was uncomfortable, didn't want it. He's 44, she's No, that's 18. disgusting. They were in a dressing room. I don't know why they were in a dressing room together, but Jason was getting changed, and Jason thought that there was a spark in the air. Why would she come in the dressing room with <laughs> me? Me, me? dressing room, we were doing Tana, this Tana, why would you come into I the dressing in room? Like, and then this is the best part. Jason leans in for a kiss. <laughs> You're not giving all the information. Oh, yeah, you're right. Your you're, you're right. You're right. You're right. Tana's 19 years old. <laughs> Would you ever have a threesome? Yeah, that's not funny. Like that's weird. That's disgusting. You know what that is? That's fucking weird. That's like my dad trying to kiss me. Fuck. Sorry, dad, if you're watching. Now, I'm not sure if this was a bit in his vlogs, and a bit is like a comedy skit where they plan it. I'm not sure if it was. But it's a bit weird to move in for a kiss, especially in the dressing rooms of, like, Debenhams. Weird, odd place to make out. But I'm actually surprised people caught on to this clip because his vlogs are so fast-paced. Well, I'm fast-paced, too. I can recite the whole alphabet in two and a half seconds. Are you ready? Told you. Now recently, ladies and gentlemen, a few of his friends have come forward who used to be in the vlog squad and claimed that they were bullied on a regular basis by David. Which I believe um, being bullied in private isn't as bad as being bullied in public because then there is also public humiliation. I was bullied, but no one felt sorry for me. Now look at me. 75,000 subscribers on YouTube. <laughs> but keep watching because I'm gonna give my opinion on all this on the end. I've got like a big hefty opinion to give. It's odd, it's sick, and I don't like it. But David Dobrik has actually released an apology. Um, I say an apology, it's kind of um, a statement. And I'm actually gonna be reviewing that at the end of the video. But for now, I wanna talk about a sexual assault that apparently occurred in David's vlogs. And for that bit, ladies and gentlemen, we are indeed gonna travel to Logicon, you know, the game show that we haven't done in about four months. But first, you know what I'm gonna say, right? That's right, everyone. Subscribe to the channel today, hit the like button, and comment for the algorithm because I love coming on YouTube when the video's first uploaded and seeing all the comments. It makes me feel juicy. 
That's not the right word. I was going for something else. And you know what? If you do subscribe to the channel and maybe even join the membership, which is active, I release a video one day early for everyone else who's active on the membership. And um, if you do that and subscribe, because I want to hit 100k now, let's just say my pet Glenn will approve of you and uh, he will follow you back on Instagram once this video has been released. Glenn is my pet hamster. I love him. He's the best. Me and my girlfriend adopted him and now we're taking care of him forever. For the next two years because they only have a two year lifespan and then they... they... But it's okay. He's like two, three, four weeks old. It's fine. Just subscribe and he'll follow you. But now everyone, let's take a fantastic, wonderful, sweet trip to my ass. No, to Logicon. That's right. Enjoy. <laughs> Hello everyone, and welcome to Logicon, where we put logic and con artists together. In this episode of Logicon, my friends, we will indeed be talking about David Dobrik and Seth. This is a game show, ladies and gentlemen, where you find people at home can play along with me and guess the answers to each scenario. Now, here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna enjoy Logicon, and I'm gonna talk about something, and you're gonna answer. And if you win, let me know. Simple. And you'll win, uh... I don't know, say a, a million dollars. <laughs> now, Seth, who is he? Well, he's a man who appears in David Dobrik's vlogs, first of all. He's been in there for quite a while, you may have seen him pop up now and then. And recently, this man has uh, decided to come out and expose David Dobrik on the Frenemies podcast. Now, and he went on there and he spoke about David Dobrik, about a prank that he'd done, which was apparently out of order. Now, I have to tell you, I love pranks. But some of them. Like this one, maybe, perhaps. My chopstick again. Chopstick. Chew stick. So what happened, you wonder? Well, I'm about to tell you, ladies and gentlemen. What happened was David Dobrik set up a skit. Now, this skit involved Seth sitting down, and apparently he could make out with a girl from the vlog squad known as Karenna Kopf. Now, she's apparently the pretty girl from the vlog squad. I say apparently. I don't know, I'm allowed to answer. I have a girlfriend. <laughs> David said he could make out with her for 60 seconds. So obviously Seth, assuming it's Karenna, he's gonna make out with her. Let's see what you think happened. Now, did David allow Seth to A, make out with Karenna for a bit? B, he actually did tongue Jason Nash and offer a short period of time for about 20 seconds. Or C, Seth ejaculated straight after David told him what was about to happen. <laughs> what was the answer, ladies and gentlemen? Take your votes now. I'll wait, I have time. Really? No, you're wrong. It wasn't C, it was in fact B. He tongued Jason Nash. Now that was brutal, ladies and gentlemen. That was brutal. What Seth didn't know is that David was playing a prank on him. This prank, Corona Cop, was actually Jason Nash. Again. What is it with Jason Nash wanting to kiss people? Especially men as well. Hmm. Going to kiss Corona, as people say, the hottest girl in the vlog squad but actually kisses a 44-year-old man with two kids. Hmm. It is a bit different, you know? A bit. Just a bit. Firstly, they have a penis, also man tits, and facial hair. So yeah, it's different. Well done! That is some shit right there. How did Seth respond to this? Well, as you already know, yes he did, as I mentioned earlier. And uh, he went on the friend of his podcast, as I mentioned. And uh, this, ladies and gentlemen, is what Seth had to say. Kind of start the make out, starts going, and then it's going on for a, a decent period of time. And then after Jason pulls off his mask, and I realized that, you know, I just was touched by someone that, you know, I did not, you know, consent to having their, their tongue and I'm sorry, it is a little bit hard to kind of like talk about this because like this situation, I know a lot of people because 
also I'm I'm a I'm I'm a man coming out about something that's like a, a, a sexual battery, sexual assault. Now as you hear, ladies and gentlemen, Seth didn't give his full consent for this. They kissed for a good while as well. <laughs> nice. Found it, bro. Oh yeah, um Kiss anyone's wondering why I'm not wearing a, a t-shirt. I don't know. I just felt like a I felt like being sexy, you know. I don't think I'm a pretty sexy guy. Would you say? But, ladies and gentlemen, this is where it gets interesting. It did happen for a second time. Wow. Oh no, he, uh, he didn't kiss Jason Nash again. That would be uh, quite, uh, quite a surprise. He pranked him again. Except this time it may have been more brutal. The second time, David set up a little fake email, a fake website, and offered Seth to be in a commercial for $2,500. Now, obviously, Seth didn't know that this was a prank. He obviously thought it was a real commercial with a real website and a real email. This was difficult for Seth. And you'll see why. Now, did A, did Seth depend on this money to pay for his apartment rent? but was not given the money he was promised. B. Pranked set him to receive in sexy pictures from Jason Nash. Or C. He shit himself during filming, while wearing a very strange purple blazer and a very creepy hat. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it was definitely not C. It was indeed A. Did you get it right? Let me know in the comment section. But let's see what Seth had to say. Because he did set it up like as a commercial and, and, I, and I explained to him like, bro, like, this is literally like, I spent like a week like doing all of this, you know, setting all this up. Like he did compensate my time for, for, for that video. But only you know, after you asked him, like, dude, you got to pay. Only after, only after I told him like, seriously, like, bro, like, I don't know if I could pay my rent this month. Cause I was Jesus. relying on one situation to basically help me move into a new place, which is literally oh what my God. was. And then, yes. and arguing with me. Now this is where my problem is, ladies and gentlemen. Seth had to beg David for the money, which I believe if you are true friends, you should never have to beg someone to give them the money that you were promised. Even though it was a prank, Seth was depending on the money to pay for his rent that month. He was in a position where he could have lost his apartment, had no food, all because of the prank that David set up. Now that is pretty shitty. What do you think of this, ladies and gentlemen? Let me know what you think in the comment section. But now, ladies and gentlemen, this is where it does get interesting. A member from the vlog squad named Scotty actually came out and uh, released a video defending David Dobrik. And uh, this is what he had to say. Do I have permission to try to prank you again and get you to make out with Jason? I'm very confused by that because how the hell could you be so confident to tell me that I have to consent to something that I'm not going to know that I'm going to do? <laughs> David films hours and hours of footage and crams them into 4 minutes and 20 seconds for his vlog. So this clip was cut short to not actually show Seth giving his consent, but showing David asking for the consent. Now do you think David would go and film this bit if Seth had said no? No. There's no way in hell. This is from a period of time when David was always at my house editing, and I very vividly remember when he was editing that clip, there was a clip in there of Seth agreeing and giving his permission. It's a bit strange how you can give consent to something after it's happened, or give consent before it happened, even though it was a prank and he didn't know it was gonna happen. That doesn't make sense. But what is interesting is these text messages. But <laughs> no, 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 no. These are the game show. We ask you what you think. So. Did he, A, in the text messages, decide that he was going to break up from the vlog squad and told David that he was going to ruin his career? B, ask David to once again make out with Jason Nash for more clout? Or C, he asked to borrow more money from David to pay for his apartment? Well, <laughs> it was actually B, ladies and gentlemen. That's right. <laughs> Guys, this is a text from Seth from about two years ago. He goes, yo, bro, I was thinking about it. I'm down for another kissing sketch. I said, haha, what do you mean? He goes, lol, I don't really care as long as you clout me up. I'm not gay, just don't care. And then he sends me this. I mean, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's not really a big deal. I mean, it's the same shit. Just, I don't know, more open-minded. After, um, you know, Seth complained on the podcast, saying 
that, you know, he didn't feel comfortable with making out with a man. It was meant to be Karenna. He asked David to once again make out with a man. <laughs> what? So he's got a big problem with it. Calls it sexual assault. But he wants to make out again. For more clout. Clout me up was his words. This has taken a turn. Now, I don't agree with a lot of st the stuff that we've spoken about today. But the stuff about Seth is very, very strange. How can a man have a problem with the first prank? Saying that it was wrong for him to do that. Go on the podcast and talk about it. But then ask to do it a third time. Strange things in a strange world with a strange little man like me. Strange, strange, strange. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to know what you think in the comments section. We are indeed going to review David Dobrik's apology now. And for that, we're going to head back to... Uh, Headquarters where all the magic happens. That's right. I do mean sex. That's the end of the game show Enjoy the rest of the video ladies and gentlemen. Woo! Peace out. Yeah! All right, everyone welcome back to my regime um, We are now going to be taking a look at David Dobrik's apology I hope you enjoyed that session of Logicon. I truly did myself um that was fucking stupid. <laughs> but we are going to react to his apology live. So we're going to watch it now together. And I'm going to give my pointers and tell you what I think. So if any of people are new watching, um, I don't make anger filled content like a lot of tea channels. Um, I'm not angry in my videos. Ever. And if you see me ever being angry, then call me out in the comments section. Do that and I... <laughs> I no, will fucking destroy you. I will kill you. So, David Dobrik posted his apology on The Viewers channel, which is his podcast, I believe, and it's titled Let's Talk. And um, I think that's a standard thumbnail. I don't think he set a thumbnail. So, already points lost. No thumbnail. Shit. And it's already got 954,000 views. And there's no thumbnail. Because I should just make an apology video for... Something. It's David. Um, I want to come on here real quick. Real quick. <laughs> okay. <laughs> address some conversations that have been going on on the internet. Um, I, you know, I've made over 600 videos and I've made a bunch of TikToks, Vines, Instagram stories, tweets, the whole thing. Um, and I'm obsessed with what I do. I love being able to make people happy for a living. And that's all that I want to do. Um, that being said, consent is something that's super, super important to me. Whether I'm shooting with a friend or shooting with a stranger, I always make sure that whatever the video I'm putting out, I have the approval from that person. Okay, so first of all, just watching this. Um, first of all, David Dobrik never really responds to... Um controversy like ever i don't think he ever has I, I get it but there's not really like a valid point at the moment there's no likes or comments they've all been turned off and um let me tell you why i think that is so a lot of people will look at this and be like oh he's turned the likes and comments off what a pussy in my opinion i think a lot of people look at the like and dislike ratio and they go to the comment section to see what everyone else is saying and that's where cancel culture comes from so i'm not defending him I'm saying that he hasn't made a point yet. However, I understand why he turned the likes and comments off. Because a lot of people will follow the train, I guess you could say, of, you know, destroying people. But he did say he likes to ask permission before and it's important. What happened with Seth is a very weird situation and it's hard to say. I think what happened at the time, especially with the texts we saw earlier, it seems like maybe Seth didn't have a problem with it at the time. But after, because he went distant, he kind of decided then it was something wrong with it, which if he doesn't feel comfortable, then fair enough, the video shouldn't have been posted. As you can tell, I'm struggling a bit to like understand here because it's so like weird what's going on. And I also acknowledge that there's times where a person can change their mind and they decide that they no longer want to be associated and no longer want to be in the video that I'm putting up and then I'll take the video down. And there's also been moments where I've looked back on videos and I realized that these don't represent me anymore and they're hurtful to other people and I don't I don't want them up because I've I've grown, you know, as a content creator and as a person and I don't agree with some of the videos I've posted. Um, with the Seth situation, I'm sorry to Seth because I, like I said, I, I just want to make videos where 
everybody in it, you know, whether you're participating or watching, is enjoying and having a good time. And I missed the mark with that one. And I'm really sorry. I, I truly, truly am. Um, and with, with people in my life that I don't film with anymore, um, like Dom and, you know, the other people that I no longer film with, I, I chose to distance myself because I don't align with some of the actions and I don't, I don't stand for any kind of misconduct. And I, I'm, I was just, I've been really disappointed by some of my friends. And for that reason, I've separated from a lot of them. Um, I think with any video I make, my main purpose is to make people happy and, and inspire people. And I just, I never want anything to get in the way of that. And I'm sorry if I've let you down. Okay, well, first of all, it was only a two minute video um, and it was on the Views channel, not his main channel. Now, um, that was strange why he did that. It's either because he doesn't want to show that there's things going on to his audience that may not be aware, or it's because he doesn't want to post negative things on there. He does apologize about the Seth situation, um, but like I said before, I find it weird with the texts how we, Seth was willing to kiss a man again. <laughs> he also admitted that he, he also says that he removed people from his friend group. Now, what I believe is that when you remove someone from your friend group, I believe that they somehow will turn against you eventually because they are upset in themselves and I've experienced this on a personal deep level where I've removed someone from my life and uh, they've been extremely pissed off by it that they try to bring me down and my career down for whatever reason. Now, I don't believe this is the case with Seth, and not at all, um, but it is strange and I don't really know what to say. My opinion is on the whole situation that there is banter. The Jew thing wasn't the greatest thing to say. That thing was, that was wrong. You know, he was wrong in that part. He shouldn't have done it. I think that we need to see what he does next to fully judge if he's gonna be better in the future, in my opinion. However, this just in, ladies and gentlemen, more allegations once again, this time against Dirty Dom and also David Dobrik. If you want to see a part two, then let's get 3,000 likes. You mad, bro? Uh, yeah. I said, tell me what you mad for. Uh, you mad, bro? Uh.